the crispy, crunchy fish fry phenomenon is cooking in Western PA. Today, the Accent On Air has your official Lenten fish fry guide, where to go for the eats and the sweet treats. Lenten Traditions 101, coming up a history primer for Easter spiritual prep. Then a Lenten message from Bishop Molesic, encouraging all of us to rediscover the mercy of God so that we can become more merciful to others. And finally, the local parish that took home the title of Best Pierogi in Pittsburgh. A pinch of salt, a pat of butter, and a plate of goodness is all part of the recipe that brings together generations of volunteers. Welcome to the Accent on Air. There's a lot to be said about the relationship between faith and food. The common human experience of sharing a meal is often the subject of post-resurrection Bible narratives. Today, much of our program describes how food strengthens the bond between generations of volunteers, supports local parishes, and sometimes brings people back to the table who've been gone for a very long time. We have a wonderful custom here uh, following daily mass every day of having our coffee clutch here in the kitchen of our social hall. And uh, certainly we know kitchens are important because it's in kitchens that we prepare meals many times. When you're in a kitchen and you're preparing anything, whether it's preparing for a breakfast or a special ethnic dinner, that recipes are very important. And so we know that as we make our relationship with Christ even more deep, uh, that God gives us a recipe for life. We find that recipe in the century-old teachings of the church. Christ gives us the recipe not only for a successful life on earth, but he gives us the recipe for eternal life. People will say, well, I'd like to tweak the recipe. Uh, but then sometimes if we don't follow the recipe, I like to use the analogy, it's like baking the cake. Uh, we're gonna follow our own recipe, so we do. We pull the cake out and we look and the cake is flat or it's burnt. And what do we do? We throw our hands up and we say, God, why did you do this to me? And maybe God quietly says, I didn't do it to you. I gave you the recipe. Just follow the recipe and you'll get a good cake. Baked, battered, grilled, or fried, the Accent Online has your complete 2019 Lenten Fish Fry Guide for the Diocese of Greensburg. Check us out on theaccentonline.org to see all of our parish listings, including this one at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Kent, Indiana County. Our Lenten dinners are a great opportunity for folks to not only provide hospitality and use their talents uh, for the greater community, but it's, it's really evangelization. They're important because they're really the main fundraiser for our church. It also gets everybody in the parish to come together and work as a team to complete something very special. Our Lenten dinner um, is special because we have so many volunteers of such a wide um, age range. The older people from the parish started it years ago and a lot of the older ones are still dedicated and we tease that they have beds downstairs. <laughs> That's how often they're here for the dinners. We're blessed to have more than just a fish fry here at Church of the Good Shepherd. We have our Lenten dinners that uh, span a variety of, of tastes and opportunities. We have the standard and probably our most popular is a fried cod dinner. We have baked cods, we have platters that include some other seafood options, we have fantail shrimp, we have popcorn shrimp for many of our younger children, and of course we have our homemade uh, potato cheese pierogies. There's a long history and tradition of meat not being eaten on Fridays, especially during Lent. There still is supposed to be some type of sacrifice, some type of um, recognition of Friday as a, as a day that we remember the Lord's passion and death. But the reason that we don't eat meat is because we look back on that Jesus being the true bread of life and him giving his own body and blood. And we try to emulate his selflessness by giving up something. It's, it's when you give up something that you can appreciate other aspects of our blessings that we would receive from God all the more. Hello, I'm Father Tyler Bandora, and today's topic is Lent. There's an old saying, no pain, no gain. I like to look at the season of Lent as a spiritual workout. 
a season that comes with its own exercise plan. There's those three traditional pillars of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. How can we look at these as ways that we can spiritually grow throughout the season? Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, the day where we gather and receive on our foreheads that sign of the cross marked with ashes. Many people might wonder, where do those ashes come from that we receive? They come from the previous Palm Sunday. Those palms that were given are collected and burned, and it's from that that the ashes are created. They remind us of our mortality. They remind us of our call to conversion, of change, that we're all called to practice throughout the season of Lent. Consider approaching Lent in a different way this year. Allow what we see, what we hear, and even the smells to draw us into that deeper relationship with Christ. What does the season of Lent look like? Often, when we walk into a church throughout the season of Lent, we're going to see purple. The priest wears purple or violet. The altar, the ambo, and even some statues and crucifixes are draped in purple. That color purple has a very ancient connection of being a sign of royalty. It was what kings would wear. It was a sign of their authority or power. And so throughout the season of Lent, this color is used liturgically because it reminds us of the power of Christ, his victory over sin and death, the power he represents and demonstrates on Easter Sunday. Lent calls us to fast, and so we fast both as human beings and also liturgically. The sound of Lent is silence. And so during the season of Lent, when we go to Mass, the Gloria that we usually hear, which is sung, is no longer there. The Gospel acclamation of the Alleluia is no longer used. It's a reminder to us that we're called to simplify the way we live throughout the season. The smell of Lent for me is often associated with those fish fries that we go to on Fridays during Lent. We do so because Fridays are a day that we abstain from eating meat. We abstain from eating meat because meat was so often associated with those joyful celebrations. If we can say no in the smaller things, then when it leads to those larger temptations, we have that ability to say no and to direct our attention more to Christ. Lent is 40 days. That number 40 is symbolic. Jesus spent 40 days in the desert before he entered into public ministry. It rained 40 days and 40 nights in the book of Genesis during the Great Flood. The Israelites wandered for 40 years before they reached the Promised Land. The number 40 represents a period of testing, or the right amount of time for God's grace to be at work in the life of his people. I pray that during this season of Lent, you may discover in a deeper way God's great love for you. Have a blessed Lent. I had the opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one with Bishop Edward Malesic of the Diocese of Greensburg to talk about the pillars of Lent. So Bishop, thanks for answering a couple of questions about the pillars of Lent. I know prayer can be so powerful, especially for those who are struggling with their faith after such a difficult time in the church. What can you say about the importance of prayer in the Lenten season and how do you encourage people to use prayer to deepen their relationship with God? Um, prayer is one of the pillars of, of Lent and prayer is there given to us uh, by God as a gift uh, that allows us to relate to God. And during Lent we're trying to draw closer to God. We're trying to open our hearts and allow the Lord to enter in. Uh, prayer has a way of uh, changing us. Prayer has a way of um, expanding our hearts so that we can receive the grace that the Lord wants to give us. And Lent is an absolutely wonderful time uh, to pray more, to um, take the opportunity to find quiet times just to reflect on the meaning of life and how the Lord calls us uh, to be disciples. Would you explain the next pillar for us, almsgiving? Almsgiving traditionally is um, one of the three pillars of Lent. Uh, and it is usually understood as giving money to the poor, giving money to good works. But I like to think of it in a broader term. I like to think of all the blessings that we've been given by the Lord. And that might be financial success, or it might be strong faith, or it might be the, uh, the gift of uh, some skill. So almsgiving for me is realizing that the Lord has given us so much um, not just to benefit us, but so that we might benefit others. 
Lent is also a time for fasting, but it's not all about food, right? It's really about self-control and giving up some of those indulgent behaviors. Sure, absolutely. But let's, let's look at fasting from food just for a second. Say I decide to fast from chocolate, which a lot of people do, and that chocolate calls to us over and over again, you know, taste this piece of chocolate, go, go to that box, it doesn't matter. And you have to learn how to control your desires. Say, no, I'm not going to eat that piece of chocolate. It teaches us how to fast from sin. That sin is just like that chocolate, saying, do it, it doesn't matter, it's not that bad. And we have to train ourselves to say, no, I don't want to do that. No, I want some, I'm going to choose something different for myself. So fasting from food is meant to teach us how to fast from sin, how to fast from injustice, how to fast from anger. The fasting rules of the church allow for one full meal uh, a day, and I would say a fish fry is one of those good full meals we can do on a Friday at Lent. <laughs> That's right. Coming up, a small Catholic parish wins a big title, creators of the best pierogi in Pittsburgh. Stay with us to find out more about the place, the price, and the people who make it special. Next, the accent photojournalist Mary Siemens captures awe-inspiring images from a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. It's a video essay you don't want to miss. Let's get started. Whether it's on your first account or your second location, let's put smart technology in your hand smarter people by your side. Let's get started online or at your local First National Bank branch. At Cynthia ProJester Chiropractic Center, we use technology to analyze a patient's spine. It impulses at a high frequency, low speed into the spine. Here you can see the patient progress and improvement along the way. We have Westmoreland Libo 2 which is oxygen therapy. Inflammation causes 90% of someone's pain. So you're gonna see change with low back pain, knees, shoulders, legs, feet. We've been here for 25 years. We're brothers and we look forward to taking care of your family. Register now for the Diocese of Greensburg's first annual men's conference, The Well. What are you looking for? The Well is designed to bring men closer to Christ and to feed, uplift, and encourage men in their faith through presentations, open discussions, prayer, and sacrament. Join us on Saturday, March 30th at Greensburg Central Catholic High School and hear from keynote speaker and former NFL star Mike McCoy, who says, our decisions determine our destiny. Register online at dioceseofgreensburg.org slash the well. My great-great-grandparents started Rizzo's 84 years ago and we're still here today. Same business, same family, same location. We have our lines of sauce and pasta in the stores, we have a banquet facility, we have a line of chocolates, we have an outdoor wedding venue. It really has become a popular spot for people to get married and have your ceremony and, and your reception. The business really has expanded, but consistent is the tradition and the quality. We're about tradition here at Rizzo's and we invite you to come start a tradition yourself. Let's make it easier for you to manage your money. Or send it to people you know with Zelle. Let's give you an on-off switch for your debit card and live support at your ATM. Let's get started online or at your local First National Bank branch. My name is Mary Siemens. I'm a photojournalist for the Catholic Accent and the Diocese of Greensburg. And I went on assignment to the Holy Land. This is where the angel appeared to Mary. This is where Jesus was born and where the shepherds heard the news of his birth from the angels. We renewed our baptismal promises in the Jordan River and marriage vows were renewed in Cana where he performed his first miracle, turning water into wine at a wedding feast. We saw the same mountains Jesus and the apostles saw and we listen to the scripture passage where Jesus calmed the sea. The city of Jerusalem was incredibly moving as we followed the path of Jesus' last days on the earth. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We walked the Via Della Rosa, the way of sorrow, carrying large wooden crosses through the narrow streets of Jerusalem, following the 14 stations of the cross. As we walked to each station, we sang and thought about how Jesus carried his cross through these same streets. 
The last five Stations of the Cross are found in the holiest of all locations on earth for Christians, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Here our group was led by Franciscan friars in a solemn procession into the church where we stopped in front of the edicule. This small structure inside the larger church holds the tomb where the body of Jesus was laid. Pilgrims are able to go inside and kneel at the very site of his resurrection. Sadly, today Christians are a shrinking minority of the population in the Holy Land. When we asked the Auxiliary Bishop of Jerusalem how we could support these Christians, he replied, encourage others to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Hopefully, this video essay will inspire you to make the journey yourself. I'm Mary Siemens, on assignment in the Holy Land. When you see the teamwork and taste the result, it's no surprise that Epiphany of Our Lord Parish in Manesson took home the title of the ultimate Pittsburgh pierogi. When we start with Lent, it's consecutive weeks that we're here every Monday and Wednesday getting everything ready for our fish fries. When my family came to the fish fries, we loved having the homemade pierogies. I mean, that's just not something you could get everywhere. It's something I remember when I would go to my grandmother's, her neighbor's church would make them, and um, I always liked them. So when we came here and started coming, my husband's like, you need to go learn how to make the pierogies. <laughs> so I did five years ago, and now here I am. Get honcho. Yeah, yeah. She, she's, she's the queen she's the, and we're, we're the princesses. The princesses. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we've been referred to. <laughs> right, because we kind of like back her up. We're behind the scenes. We get all that, you know, and she knows if for some reason she can't be here, we're here to back her up. A March Madness style bracket was started in September by The Incline. That's a Pittsburgh based news outlet. The Epiphany Pierogi made it to the Sweet 16, then to the Final Four, and finally, the Top Two. Receiving 86% of votes in the final round, Epiphany of Our Lord was declared winners at Kennywood's Pittsburgh Pierogi Festival. Volunteers rushed to the stage with their pastor, Father Michael Crookston, to accept their award, then posed with the Pittsburgh dad actor, Kurt Wooten. They were even invited to KDKA's Pittsburgh Today Live. But just know that uh, the people that, that did it, it's, it's something very special for them. And as far as us winning the contest, <laughs> I mean, our church, they just got behind it because they know what kind of product that, that right. we have. And they know that they're good and we want other people to know that. We knew it would be something positive for our church, but also for the community of Manesson. Now that they are champions, the Epiphany volunteers are gathering monthly to make pierogies to keep up with the high demand. You can taste their award-winning pierogies during Lent. Their fish fry details are online at theaccentonline.org. I'm Jordan Wyko. I'm Robin Maul with The Accent On Air, and I'm in the kitchen with a generation's old lentil soup recipe that may just become your new favorite. At the end of Lent comes Easter, a time to celebrate the resurrection. I decided to show you how to make a frittata because where I was born and raised, this is what we did on Easter Sunday. Eggs represent new and everlasting life. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make Italian Easter bread. Faith and food continues after the break. For more than 25 years, Ford Business Machines has been providing quality, efficient document management systems to their clients in Western Pennsylvania and beyond. Their reputation stands on delivering high quality technical solutions at competitive pricing. As a family and veteran owned business, they take pride in not only giving back to the community, but being a part of it. Whether you're a small business or a large corporation, Ford Business Machines can assist in all of your print, document management, and information technology needs. Save the date for the second annual Family Fest Greensburg, sponsored by the Diocese of Greensburg. Sunday, June 9th at Christ Our Shepherd Center, Route 30 East in Greensburg. The event kicks off at 11 a.m. with an outdoor mass celebrated by Bishop Malesic. Noon to 3, visit the parish food vendors, children's tent, teen cafe, obstacle course, trackless train, bounce house, and more. Plus, new this year, a rock painting extravaganza. Paint a rock with an inspirational message. Family Fest Greensburg, Sunday, June 9th. Register online at familyfestgreensburg.org. It's time to visit a Catholic school in the Diocese of Greensburg because it's time for your student to shine. Students can talk openly about faith in a caring environment where preparing for tomorrow's challenges is today's priority. Many students receive financial aid, making it more affordable than you might think. It's time to visit dioceseofgreensburg.org to find a Catholic school near you. 
For a list of open houses, visit dioceseofgreensburg.org. It's time for your student to shine. Hello, my name is Ashley Frederick. I'm the third generation family member of Unity Printing located in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. At Unity Printing, we produce digital and offset printing, screen printing, embroidery, signage, trophies awards, plaques, glass etching, and promotional items. At Unity Printing, we produce all of our products in-house there before we can assure that your branding matches across all of our different product lines. In addition, we have a very high accuracy rate, the rate in which we complete jobs without any mistakes, which is always above 99%. I decided to show you how to make a frittata because where I was born and raised, this is what we did on Easter Sunday. That was in Pizza Ferrato in the mountains of the Abruzzi, Italy. We had lots of chickens and we grew things. That was the way of life. That was the, the meal Easter Sunday morning and that was after church, by the way, because we were not allowed to eat before Mass. That was the law. It became so traditional that everybody knows it, everybody remembers it. The trick is, you can put in there anything you want, but don't you burn it. Voila, there's your frittata. Remember, on Easter Sunday morning, go to church first. Come home and make this, it doesn't take too long. Buon appetito. Today I'm going to show you how to make Italian Easter bread. My grandmother taught me, Nonna, taught me how to make the Easter bread. Uh, we would make it every Good Friday together dozens and dozens of loaves and we would color our eggs together and then twist them into the bread. Each region of Italy makes their own dishes. Our dishes come from the region of Molise, Italy, where my uh, great-grandparents came from, a little town called Church of Maggiore. The tradition is important to me today. I do it still every year on Good Friday. If you uh, swing by, you'll see me there making the breads, twisting, braiding, and coloring eggs. What Faith and Food episode would be complete without a recipe from one of our local pastors? Okay, Father McGurk, tell us what we're making today. Well, because it's for Lent, it'll be a vegetarian lentil soup. One shredded onion, a couple pieces of shredded celery, and some matchstick carrots, all chopped up fine so they cook faster. One shredded potato and some spices that we're going to be putting in. One good teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of salt, and that depends on your health, a couple bay leaves to give it that soup flavor we're all familiar with. And my grandfather Corso always loved fennel and anything with tomato. So those are fennel seeds to oh. give the tomato base a little more flavor. We're going to go ahead and put in the um, celery that's been minced and the onions that have also been minced already for a good eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah, just till the onions are translucent. Okay. But let's do the potatoes the potatoes, next. okay. So you just shredded the potato. Is it a red potato? As a single guy, some days you have what you have. <laughs> now, Father McGurk, is this a family recipe? Um, Mom's people came from Sicily and they loved soups like this. They loved beans, they loved vegetarian things, although they would eat fish and other mm -hmm. products too. But especially in Lent, they had the best recipes for Lent, including pizzas that were meatless. They're thick, they're delicious, and if you're very fussy about weight, don't come. <laughs> And I think we put everything in that we needed. Okay. Oh, except so for the lentils. Yes, can't forget that. Why do we use lentil beans? Well, because my dad and my mother often used really dried beans. They need to soak overnight. Mm. They need to boil for about two hours before you can even add flavors and salt to them. Okay. I like lentils because in just 15 minutes, the dried bean pretty much rehydrates and they're ready to go. Oh, great. Um, usually in about half an hour, this will be cooked. That's all it takes. Yeah, uh, uh, although if you need a little more heat, then you bring it up a little bit. Okay. Robin, these bowls are ready for tasting, and this really reminds me of Lent because we're celebrating the death of Jesus on the cross, and there is no meat in this, but it's nourishing and the best thing you can eat for your health. Okay. Mmm, that's delicious. It's a very good bean to it eat. It is, and it's a very quick and easy soup to make mm. for families. And if you do have someone coming over last minute and you have all the ingredients, it's simple. You can get everybody involved in helping with the process. Well, that's a great idea. It's good for the family. My name is Monsignor Raymond Riffle, 
and I'm the Managing Director of Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Greensburg. And I'm very excited to announce the winners of this year's Communities of Salt and Light Awards. For the past 20 years, the Communities of Salt and Light Awards Dinner has recognized outstanding individuals or groups in the categories of humanitarianism, philanthropy, and outstanding human service organizations. The Humanitarian Award goes to Barbara Zaccone. The Philanthropy Award goes to Dr. and Mrs. Primo and Hannah Bautista. Finally, Shop with a Cop has been selected as this year's Outstanding Human Service Organization. Please join us for the 21st Annual Communities of Salt and Light Awards Dinner on Thursday, April 25th, 2019. Please visit ccharitiesgreensburg.org for more information. I'm Jerry Zufeld, editor of the Catholic Accent newspaper, which is delivered to more than 40,000 homes every month. I have been with the paper for 18 years and seen many changes, but the one I'm most excited about is the multimedia content we've added. Take some time to check out theaccentonline.org to see clickable content like videos, photo essays, and expanded infographics. You're already watching this quarterly television show. It also has an accompanying magazine with stories, recipes, and of course, the 2019 Diocese of Greensburg Lenten Fish Fry Guide. These changes will allow us to better connect with you, our readers, and our viewers. Subscribe to the magazine and the newspaper by visiting theaccentonline.org. Thanks for watching the Accent on Air, our faith and food episode. Be sure to watch our next Accent on Air, where we have a look at some fabulous parish events coming up this summer. I'm Jennifer Mealy. Register now for the Diocese of Greensburg's first annual men's conference, The Well. What are you looking for? The Well is designed to bring men closer to Christ and to feed, uplift, and encourage men in their faith through presentations, open discussions, prayer, and sacrament. Join us on Saturday, March 30th at Greensburg Central Catholic High School and hear from keynote speaker and former NFL star Mike McCoy, who says, Our decisions determine our destiny. Register online at dioceseofgreensburg.org slash the well. It's time to visit a Catholic school in the Diocese of Greensburg because it's time for your student to shine. Catholic schools build a sense of service, creating respectful and humble community leaders. Visit dioceseofgreensburg.org for a list of open houses so you can hear more about how Catholic schools are growing faith and building character in a high-tech academic atmosphere. Register online for an open house at dioceseofgreensburg.org. It's time for your student to shine.